And good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. And welcome to another edition of Talking Sports. I'm Sergeant Rock. I will be joined by Joe Stovall here shortly. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. The Fighting Illini after winning three in a row. Oops. The Illini are who we thought they were. Also, you know, this NFL, there's uh, getting ready for the draft. There's free agency going on right now. And a lot of big names are being moved around. And some just flat out got fired, including Chicago Bears, Devin Hester. We'll tell you about that. Also, the Lakers got blasted by the Clippers last night. If you didn't see that game, you missed a laugher. Also, today at 3 o'clock, we're going to be talking to a very, very special guest. If I told you who it was, I'd probably have the key. But we ain't going to do that. So be sure to stick around for that. It's coming up at 3 o'clock. We got a lot more in all of that and more on this edition of Talking Sports. You stay tuned. Welcome back. Talking Sports, WBCP 1580. UPTV channel. What channel? Seven. No. No, six. no. I'm six. Six. And six. No. Five. Five. <laughs> Five. And uh, what's the other one? 99. 99. You got to flash it because oh. you see it's on TV. 99. That's on UVerse. UVerse, yeah. What is UVerse? Uh. Another one of them things we don't know nothing about. They just needed a name and they just decided yeah. on you. You verse. Sounds good to me. Let's go to lunch. That's when the marketing meeting all the big guys in suits and ties sitting mm -hmm. around the table. We need a name for this product. I know big guy. Joe. You verse. You verse. Hmm. What does the U stand for? That stands for you, the customer. Oh, that's the right idea, yeah. Joe. I tell you what, after this meeting, come down to the office. We'll talk about it. There might be a little something in it for you. Thanks, big guy. You bet. Can I go to lunch with you guys? No. <laughs> you ain't getting the key to the toilet either. Right. I got to go out to the potty, porta potty outside. Yes, you do. At yes, the construction you. site. Yes, you do. And all the construction guys laugh at me. Yes, you do. Okay. You know, you know Joe, you know, on birthdays. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom usually brings, you know, down a big old cake. Oh, man. I remember one time she made this giant chocolate cake. One time she made a pie. Yeah. Some brownies. We eat good on birthdays. Man, we sure do. Yes, we do. Talking sports. But, uh, you know, today, you know, she's getting ready to go out of town. Where's your mama going? She's going to see my daughter down in Texas. You got a daughter? Yes. Did Maury say you have a daughter? You didn't have to. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, did, did you try to do the dance? No, no. It didn't work. Okay. I was, I was a, 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 a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Father. I was, I was a cool dad. Oh, you were the kind of dad that kids like? <laughs> of course. You, so you weren't around. <laughs> and you sent a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to my mom. Uh, you know, she didn't, she, so she's getting ready to go out of town. Right. And uh, she wanted you to have a little something, something. So, Joseph, happy birthday. Here. Well, hold it up. Now, that's either the gi the giantest, biggest cupcake ever made in the history of mankind. That's a Guinness cupcake. That's a cupcake. Or that's a miniature cake, yeah. half pie, half. It's tasty, too. It's tasty. And then she gave the old sprinkles. Yeah, you know, everybody likes sprinkles. Right. Who doesn't like Who doesn't sprinkles? like sprinkles? Take a kid to an ice cream shop. Give me some sprinkles. Uh, who's going to say no old sprinkles? No, nobody. Well, there, uh, there you go. Jim. First of all, I'm, I'm touched. You should be. That your mother, your mother. Mine. Not mine, yours. Mine. Remember, my birthday. And to be able to be 16 and be on TV is such a special occasion. I really am. Dab your eyes, man. You're getting a little misty. Uh, is my mascara running? No, not yet. Not yet? 
Yeah, I got the Dolly Parton on. <laughs> Good thing. Huh? Woo! Yeah. Well, thank you, Mom. I yeah. appreciate it. Great way to start off a birthday weekend. The actual birthday is Sunday, March 9th. I want everybody, I, you know, this happens every year. I don't know why. But we go through these winters with, you know, the, the temperatures are so low. And, and for some strange reason. Then all of a sudden, bam. Bam. It changes. And guess when it changes? On your birthday. On my birthday. Every year, I mean, like clockwork. Yeah, it's supposed to be at what, 58, 59, Sunday, something like that? <laughs> you see what happened? Like it's planned. Man, we need to fire up the grill. Yeah, that would be nice. Tips, ribs. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right. Speaking of a plan, we got a sports plan for the next hour and 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever. Talk sports. You can watch this show Saturday mornings, 79. Channel 5 and 9-9. U-verse. U-verse. Yeah. Tune in. The fighting a lot of who we thought they were. Ooh. After winning three in a row, Michigan comes to town and oops. Oh. That was one of the ugliest ball games I've seen in quite I'm, some time. I'm going to share a stat with you that really kind of puts this whole game into perspective. Now, the final score was 83 84 to 53, Michigan. Do you know Michigan only needed to score two points in the second half and they still would have won the game? Get out. Two points. That's how bad Michigan beat Illinois. And to think in the, the previous three games, Illinois held their opponents to uh, under 50. For the entire game? Yeah. Actually, previous four games. Okay. Four Even games. the one they lost to Ohio State. Right. Ohio State still only scored 48 points that game. Michigan had 52 points at halftime. No defense. Poor shooting. John Gross said it best. I don't know if you heard LeBron when he scored the 61. He says like taking, throwing a golf ball into the ocean. Well, Michigan had on ocean colors because they were blue. Yeah, they hit about what? 27 three-pointers? No, I'm just joking they had a lot of them. They had a lot of them. Let's put it this way. The point differential in threes was 48 to 6 in terms of what Michigan scored compared to Illinois. 48 to 6. You can't, I don't care who you are, can't win a ball game that way. I mean, and, and, and we was giving them such high praise last week. Well, you got to remember. Well, it was, it was deserved. Yeah, it, they earned it. But you got to remember, Michigan, when they came into town, it was senior night for Illinois seniors, Joseph Bertrand and John Eakey. That's not a good way to go at it. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, thanks for nothing. It's like taking this giant cupcake yeah. and smashing it in your face. Well, how was your senior night? Oh, we got blue no, out. Uh, we got beat by 31. Yeah, we... Hey, but I got this nice frame jersey. Yes, I but the thing is, when Michigan came into town, they had already clinched a share of the Big Ten title. By winning that game, they would have – and they are now the outright regular season Big Ten champs. So they had a lot of incentive coming into the game. The other thing is, that's a well-oiled, well-oiled offensive machine. You got Nick Stauskas, Glenn Robinson III, Karis LeVert, uh, Spike Albrick, Derek Walton. They've got uh, John Horse, uh, was it uh, Morgan? And, and Horford, the two-headed monster in the post. Uh, they've got Nick Irvin, freshman coming off. That's a good team. And it's like you got to pick your poison with that team. And when I say pick your poison, it's not like one guy shooting a three. Mm-hmm. Everybody who plays on the perimeter can shoot. So you either got to decide are you going to let the perimeter guys beat you or the post guys going to beat you. They got beat yeah. by both sides. Yeah, uh, I don't know if need to play more zone, though. No. Yes. You play zone against Michigan, they'd have lost 184 <laughs> to 53. You make them shoot three. Oh, they'd have been throwing, they'd have been turning their back to the hoop. They'd have been like this. Oh, what in? I mean, it. those games happen in everybody's season. Oh, yeah, most definitely. But what do you think about Illinois' lack of defense uh, th- this trip down? It was like, uh, phew. Though it was one of those ones you can't explain because, like, there was a one example 
Stauskas had uh, Nana Egwu on the left side, elbow extended out on the three line. And he's holding the ball, and Igwu's got his hand up. Because you know the old saying, hand down, man down. Well, this time he had his hand up. I mean, he had it up in his face. And he's holding the ball, and he's just staring at it. Normally, the offensive player will pass it, and, you know, he just let it go. It was like big brother playing against little brother. That's no respect. That's what that is. And then he turned around. I think the what epitomized the whole game. The Orange Crush kept chanting, USA, USA. Kostowskis, he's from Canada. Right before halftime, he hit about a, what was it, about 30-footer. And after he made it, he just turned around and stared at the Orange Crush before he went off the floor. Yeah, you can do that. But it was like, that was the dagger. Like, eh? <laughs> just because I'm from Canada, eh? I'm not Justin Bieber. There you go. You know. He's not strange brew. Mm -hmm. He was good brew. So what did that do to Illinois? It Three, four weeks ago, you looked at me like I was crazy when I talked about NCAA chances, and they went on that three-game winning streak, beat Michigan State at Michigan at East Lansing. Everybody's thinking, hey, Illinois got a shot. And then they just came in and just nailed the coffin. Well, you shot. know, I was reading an article uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, when they talking about Illinois is one of those teams that might be a bubble buster mm -hmm. come Big Ten uh, tournament, time. tournament time. Well, here's the thing. Let's move forward. They play Iowa to close the season out. And then the tournament it starts up uh, next Thursday. week. Is it next week? Yeah, next Thursday. They are that type of team. We just saw it in the past three games. Mm -hmm. They get hot. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we talked about this before. They, can, I think they can win three games. Can they win four in a row? I don't think so. I think that's too much of a task to win four in a row and win the tournament. Can they win three and, as you said, bust some bubbles? Mm -hmm. Minnesota. They played Minnesota. They could bust Minnesota's bubble. They beat Iowa. them at home. Iowa, they could bust their bubble. Nebraska, mm -hmm. bust their bubble. Those are the type of teams that don't want to face Illinois in this tournament. And the tournament is going to be in Indianapolis. Isn't Indianapolis. It? Michigan, obviously, by winning the Big Ten regular season, will be the number one seed. Michigan, probably number two. Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State, I'm sorry. Now, Michigan State, speaking of that team, expanding our conversation in the big, in, in, to the Big Ten. They're getting guys healthy. Last night, they beat Iowa by 10 at home. It was their senior night, Keith Appling and uh, – Adrian Payne are the two seniors going out. But they got Brandon Dawson back. He's starting to play. Appling with the right wrist injury. Scored in double figures for the first time in forever. Michigan State is that team. When they got everybody healthy, everybody playing on all cylinders. Probably the most talented team in the Big Ten. So that's another one. Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Bundy and the guys laughed at me. Remember when I said Wisconsin had the makings of a Final Four team at the beginning of the year, and then they went on that losing streak? But they're back in there. Yeah, there was talk that uh, <coughs> I was watching the uh, the Louisville uh, game last Saturday. That was a good game, too. Mm -hmm. They got beat, though. Anyway, they were talking about Wisconsin, a team because of their schedule, strength of schedule, that they deserve it over number one seed. I think based on what you said there, but we both know the process. They're not in that upper echelon in terms of the how the rankings are set right now, and they have won the the Big Ten regular season. Even if they won the Big Ten tournament, I think they might get nothing higher than a two seed. I think right now, if you look at the landscape of the NCAA right now, out west, the strongest team out west is Arizona. Arizona. Fact. You then come to the Midwest. Wichita State's undefeated. Regardless of who they played, I think that's one of the arguments. Ever, oh, well, they're in the Missouri Valley. Going undefeated in college basketball. Means something. And this is a Final Four. They went to the Final Four last year. This is not a Wichita State team that's just appearing out of nowhere. They, made, they got themselves on the radar last year by mm -hmm. getting to the Final Four. So that's your second 
number one seed. Then you look at what's happening with, you know, you talk about Louisville, Cincinnati, Kansas. Kansas, those schools. You've got kind of a cluster. And then you go to Florida in the SEC. Florida is probably your fourth number one seed. Well, let's look at it now. Duke started out the season, what, rated right 19, 20 or something mm-hmm. like that. Now they're all the way up to, uh, I think, 4-4, four, 4-4, four, four, yeah. four, fifth. And then turn and around you know, and lose the Wake Forest. Yeah, you know, I think they were peaking. You know, they say you want to go into the tournament winning. Mm-hmm. You want to at least have a four or five game winning streak going in and, and riding that wave. The thing you got to think about, though, is what what do you have to do to get to the Final Four? You got to win two weekends in a row. Mm-hmm. Simple as that sounds. Because that's all it is. You got to win a Thursday, Saturday, or a Friday, Sunday. Advance to the next one, Thursday, Saturday, or Friday, Sunday. You're in the Final Four. But what has to happen? Number one, the number one thing that you have to do in tournament basketball, you got to secure the ball. You can't turn it over. The second thing is shooting. If you watch some of these upsets that happen in the tournament, what normally happens is you, like a three and a 14. You get one of these 14 seed teams and they come out and they're throwing up shots from behind the three point line and they're draining threes and they're putting so much offensive pressure on you that when you turn around to have the ball, if you're not scoring the ball. If you're not scoring threes or if you're not making a basket, period. You're, you're putting yourself behind pretty quickly in the ball game. That's it. And then now that pressure of... I got to play catch up. And then when you look up at the clock, it was 18 minutes when you looked up, and you look up again and it's seven. And the score hasn't shrunk. Now you really start playing panic ball. Mm-hmm. The final thing is, in terms of you think about the one word that nobody really wants to put out there, but it's the truth, is luck. You just got to be lucky. Sometimes you just got to get a break here, a ball that bounced weird, you got to recover it, a crazy shot that goes in, you know, one of those momentum deals. Because when you watch these games on TV, even though they're being played at neutral sites, mm-hmm. see my air quotes? That's mine. Look, look like at Bunny Rabbit. If you say so. I was just. You took your meds today? I'm just checking. And they were good. <laughs> I actually took a double dose. They were so good. <laughs> Go ahead. But you got to get that. But like I said, the neutral site situation is really not neutral. Because let a 14 seed or a 12, that underdog, start off the way you said. And watch what happens to the arena. Everybody starts rooting for them. Is that? And now you're the one seed, three seed, or whatever. And you're looking around going... Wait a minute, I thought this was a tournament game. It feels like we're on, we're playing at their place. Mm-hmm. And that will give that shot of adrenaline to that underdog. And right. Stranger things happen. But you have got to be able to secure that basketball. All right, yeah, okay, as long as we're talking about tournament basketball, you think the out of line I may be NIT? Yeah. 17 wins. And even if they don't beat Iowa or, you know, they get – even one win in the uh, – to have an 18-win season based on all the stuff that's happened this year, transition, et cetera, the only issue is they play all the games on the road because now the renovation – and, I mean, it started the night that game ended. I know. They rolled up the floor. floor oh. And, and the cranes and stuff so, <laughs> rolled down, down through the tunnel, didn't it? All you heard was beeping and yellow lights flashing. So, yeah, the, so there will be no home games. Even if Illinois plays in NIT, because of the fact that the renovation is State Farm Center, but I think they're deserving. You're playing. You got to remember this: whether it's the Big Twelve or the Big Ten, it, the, you're either in the top conference or the second conference, and to have six victories, every every team in the conference has at least five or six victories. Mm-hmm. That shows how good the conference is. You got to be in NIT. All right, excellent. Yeah. All right, that's uh, line of basketball. I want to move on quickly. Uh, how much time? Where are we at? Oh, okay, we got time. I want to move quickly to the to the NFL. Some crazy things that went on these past couple of weeks. I mean, you got uh, we're getting ready for the draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of teams are cutting loose, some firing some folks. They trying to get under the salary cap and yep. all that so they can get some folks. 
prime example, Devin Hester. No longer a bear. No longer a Chicago bear. Would you ever thunk it? Never. What does that tell you about the NFL? It's a business. Everybody's expendable. Mm -hmm. When the Colts let Peyton Manning go, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that was a neck thing and an injury. And you got... Everybody's expendable in the NFL. And the other thing is, you now see with these contracts, when they announce that Sergeant Rock just signed a three-year, $27 million contract. Lucky me. Right. And your signing bonus was $12 million. Better still. That means that the only thing that was guaranteed out of that entire contract was your $12 million. Exactly. After that, if they don't want you, you got to go. Uh, Denver. Let Chip Bailey go. Ten years. He even said he would take a pay cut and he would move to safety. They're like, nah. Read over. Thanks, champ. <laughs> he didn't lost a few steps. Right. And, you know. I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> but, but champ, you know? you, you're really making a spectacle. Stop crying. <laughs> exactly. You making us look bad yeah. out there too. Right. I mean, you know, looking at the back of receivers' jerseys is not a good sign of no, a good corner. There's no position called a uh, butt backer mm. where you're chasing the butt of the guy. Uh, Matt Castle, he's might be running to Houston. Matt, Ka now you think about what he's thinking. He used this year with Minnesota to do what? Learn some things. Learns and audition. Yeah. Basically, he put together an audition tape to say, hey, I think I can get a starting job somewhere else on a better team and get more money at the same time. Now, he was going to get, I think, like $3.7 million from Minnesota mm -hmm. if he stayed. So he's really playing kind of a gamble. But if he if this gamble works, he could double his salary. And think about it. Let's say he goes to Houston and they draft a rookie quarterback. He may not have to play but a few games to get that money. Because you know what they're gonna try to do is they draft that rookie quarterback and bring him in. And let Matt Castle work with him. That's it. So how many times have we seen that done in the NFL? Oh, almost every year. Now Adrian Peterson, you know, you know, if you remember a few years ago, Adrian Peterson, you lucky if you got a word out of him. Right. These past two seasons, he's been, you know, he's been. He's talking like he's on steroids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't say that. Oh, I ain't okay. say that. He, he wants who? Michael Vick to come to Minnesota. He says Michael Vick could get them to the playoffs. You think so? I think I think Minnesota has a lot more problems than, than bringing, just quarterback. Right, and uh, you don't want the uh, Humane Society on your back anyway with Michael Vick. You know the old Michael Vick. Yeah, the old Michael. But the, the foot back to real issue of football. Michael Vick hasn't played one solid season in like five years since he's been since he back. got out. Right. So physically. I think sometimes we get enamored with, you know, days gone by. You know, when Michael Vick back in the... I can still do what I did 10 years, years ago. ago. No, no you can't. Nobody can do what they did 10 years ago, regardless of what it is. And I think that's the issue is that even now, what that proves is that, you know, fans romanticize about guy, days gone by. Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing a guy like Adrian Peterson romanticize about Michael Vick's days gone by. Because if he could do what he did... He'd he still be doing it. He'd still be doing it, and he'd be in Philadelphia. Nick Foles came took out, his Came spot. out of nowhere. Right. Because, you know, when, when he first got introduced to this, Nick who? See? And now you go from Nick who to he's our starter. Yeah. Mike, you can go. So I think I understand Adrian Peterson, you know, may have a personal relationship with Michael Vick, you know, may want to get that veteran-type leadership in there. But, the, I mean – you can catch lightning in the box. Brett Favre came back, played with Minnesota that one magical year, mm -hmm. and what happened the second year? He flopped the next. Right, and he was done. Yeah. Randall Cunningham played with Minnesota. Two, you, three years. You know, had that one spectacular year. That was it. Veteran quarterbacks, guys who are way past their prime. I think your only exception would be Warren Moon. But he only played two years with Minnesota. Mm -hmm. He did okay. But even then, 
He got him to the playoffs the first year, but second year he didn't. It's just I don't you think they use his head to shape the NFL helmet? The one move? Yes. Either him or Kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see anyway. a change in terms of that. Now, free agency itself actually starts Tuesday, the 11th. So that's why you're seeing all this movement now. As you said, teams are trying to get under the cap. The cap yeah. this year is $133 million. Sounds like a lot of money. But, for example, some of these guys with these accelerators in their contract, mm-hmm. in Dominica's suit, Detroit's got to make a decision now because if they don't make a, a restructure his contract, do you know he will make uh, roughly 20, he'll be 26, 28 million against their cap next year? That's ridiculous to have, especially a defensive player, a defensive tackle in that position. You know, that money set for quarterbacks and, you know, used to be running backs. Mm-hmm. And to have a defensive tackle set against your cap like that, not good. Well, they're basically, uh, I thought defensive ends make a, a little bit more money. Than a tackle, than right. A tackle. And I think that, you know, like I said, the way Sue's contract was set up, you know, you, you most teams don't even project out to get to that position until it gets here. Well, hello, Detroit. The day is here. You gotta update that contract. Or imagine them. Could you see Detroit not resigning in Donald Kasu next year? No. Right. So they gotta do something. So they better do it now. So that's why you're seeing some of this strange stuff. Final thing on the NFL, you talked about the NFL draft coming up in May. A lot of pro days are going on. Yeah, Illinois had theirs what yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they had one no-show. Nathan, Nathan Shieldhouse looks like he's not going to try to pursue a I career think, in the NFL. I think it's a wise choice. Well, you got to remember, Nathan Shieldhouse is the total, the all-time total yardage leader for the University of Illinois. That doesn't mean anything, Joe. There have been excellent college quarterbacks who went into the NFL and just bombed terrifically. Prime example, coach of South Carolina now. Steve Spurrier. Yeah, excellent college quarterback. But he did what? He went in, you said. I'm saying he's not even, he didn't even go to the pro day yesterday. Well, some, 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 I mean, he know his place. I mean, what do they tell you? You see the commercial every year, especially during the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. They say thousands of, uh, what they call them, student athletes mm-hmm. return will turn pro in something else other than their sport. Right. I'm just saying that to at least give it a shot. You're the all-time yardage leader, University of Illinois. Uh, you see some other, there's some other quarterbacks who, not as good, who get shots and sometimes they become backups. And But maybe he's got a, another life plan that we're not aware of. Could be. And obviously, you know, we're just talking sports. I'm thinking so. he just have the guts the intestinal oh, fortitude yeah. to admit I can't make it in the NFL. Here we go with this old war horse. I'm going to challenge your manhood and see where you're at. Is that... Carry on, soldier. Now, come on, Joe. Haven't you ever talked yourself out of doing something that you probably knew wasn't going to fare well for you? Is he setting that fire? Still in that car. Uh, can people hear me? Am I talking out loud? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> oh, I, that was that was, was, that was a, story of your life. That was the, that was the meds and the voices. But uh, no, I've never talked myself out of anything. I have <laughs> <laughs> thousands of times. I have thousands of times. Thousands of times. Wow. Knowledge is king, Joe. Yeah, but talking is a little overrated. Knowledge is everything. Wow. All right, before we go to break here, because we have to take one, don't forget, coming up at 3 o'clock, we have a, we're going to be talking to a very special guest, Joe. I pride myself, I'm proud of myself, that uh, I was able to pull this off. Okay, who is it? I can't tell you. So how are they so special and you can't even say it? Because it's a surprise. Who's it a surprise for? Everybody. You can't even give them a... 
No. Uh, Inkling? No, that's how you get on the state tune to find out who it is. Yeah, most people just change the station. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, for the past three weeks here on WBCP, you've been seeing the commercials on TV. You've been hearing them on the radio about Get Covered Illinois. Those of you who do not have health care insurance, come March 31st. That's the last day to sign up for health care insurance. Oh, you go to jail, right? No, man. You ain't gonna go to jail. They're going to find you, though. <laughs> They'll find you and pick you up and take you to jail? Oh, no, they will find you and fine you. Oh, okay. okay. Meaning you have to pay some type of fine, fine, fine for not signing up. So uh, they have an enrollment clinic at Parkland College Room X-150 uh, every day, I think, March 5th through uh, March 12th, 1230 to 430 p.m. Uh, and at area churches from 9 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. You can go in. They're going to have the, uh, the navigators. That's what they call them. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be there to answer your questions about health coverage and this, that, and the other. And they'll be able to help you sign up for health care service. So they'll be right like on the computer they're, right they, there. They'll be on site. Next. Do I need, what, what do I need to bring for them to do this for me? Uh, <clears throat> Identification, you know, social security number. It's me. Passport, driver's license, state ID. Uh, your financial information, you know, like a tax return, W-2, or a bank statement. And you know, all up in my stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, and any current insurance information, which includes employer health plans. So if you have that, uh, you may, may need to bring that. Now, Robert Porter, a certified navigator with the sh uh, champagne for better health care will be on at the parkland college campus in the area churches on the listed dates to answer questions and to help people enroll in this new health coverage plan so uh these these are the churches uh salem baptist church march 8th that's that is, tomorrow that's tomorrow you can go down there to salem baptist church and they will be there to help you sign up for this program all right uh, on March 15th, St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. That's uh, 2200 Follow Road in Urbana. They'll be there on March 15th. And Wesley Foundation, 1203 West Washington Street in Urbana on March 12th. So uh, if you don't have health coverage, you need to get to one of these places, and they will help you take care of it. Fantastic. So get covered, Illinois. Get covered, Illinois. I got mine. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Lakers got blasted last night by, by uh, the Clippers. If you took the Lakers and the Fighting Illini and put them together, they couldn't bust a pinata. Couldn't bust a pinata. With no blindfold. I mean, I mean, of course, they're without uh, uh, Nash and, and Scooby. I mean, Kobe. So... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he went out there. I mean, anyway, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more talking sports. Welcome back, talking sports. WBCP fifteen eight. You showed a picture to everybody of this cake. Right? Mm -hmm. She gonna be showing the wrapper. <laughs> there it is. The after. What's left of it? You got some crumbs on you. Right? I mean, must have, huh? Do I need to wipe? Yeah, you go. There you Veronica go. would tell me. What? Crumbs. See? Thumbs up. Now, I'm probably going to do the rest of the show with a big thing of icing on the side of my face. She's like, that guy's an idiot. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate Veronica. Hey, let me know when it's 3 o'clock so we can make this phone call. Okay, it's uh, not 3 o'clock. I said, let me know. Right. But it's not 3 o'clock. Okay. Not at all. Now, when we went to break, Lakers, NBA basketball, lost by 48 points. Worst loss in the history. I'm talking about when George Mikan. Who? George Mikan. Who is he? He was a big, tall dude, wore glasses. When they were the Minneapolis Lakers, they didn't lose this bad. When Wilt Chamberlain played for the Lakers, never lost this bad. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar never lost this band. What about Magic? Never lost this band. Shaquille O'Neal. Never. Kobe Bryant. Scooby. Scooby. 
not playing. He know he, he you know he's still injured. Right. There's a lot of people saying that this might be his last season. Well, the the injury that he had, which was a small fracture, thought was you know it was only going to be a six to eight week thing. We're in March. He still hadn't recovered from that. And you know, being an old wily veteran, sometimes those injuries that healed when you were in your twenties doesn't heal when you're in your late thirties. Yeah, the war wounds always come back. Yeah. You mentioned Steve Nash. Looks like he won't play anymore this year. And right now what you're seeing, which is the inevitable of any franchise, it happens in football, baseball, and we're seeing it in basketball. The end of a dynasty. That's it. The Laker dad dynasty. Right now, could you name two starters on the Lakers right now? Who are playing right now? Who are playing right now. What's the French dude name? See? You already messed it up. You called him French. He's from Spain, man. Okay, wait, wait, okay. Get the country right, I bro. Knew, I know he was somewhere across. The oh, I hate when you do that. Uh, what is it? Xenophobe? That's what you are. You, you just you have no respect for. I can't think of one. Right. See, that, I, I have to see the face. That's the problem, though. I can't come with, with the name in there. Back in, we just named off guys from the fifties. We said Mikan and Chamberlain. You see how easy that is. But today's Laker, you can't because Nash is hurt. Coke Scooby, as you call him, is out. There's nothing on the Lakers right now that I mean, resembles a Laker. And you know what? I thought it was so funny because a lot of people talking about. Uh, uh, Staples Center is the home of the Lakers. The Clippers get no love when it comes to the Staples Center. Even though. I mean, there's not a Clipper banner in the rafters <laughs> in the United Center. They got hundreds of Laker banners, but not one Clipper banner. Because the Clippers haven't done it. I'm surprised they even changed the floor when the Clippers fell. Right, they still have to put on the <laughs> Lakers floor. Exactly. Instead of the Clippers logo, it's still the Lakers logo. Exactly. Wait, well, you know... You think about two teams in one city. Baseball, we all know about New York with the Yankees and the Mets. But they got their own ballparks. Chicago, Sox, and got their own ballpark. Got their own ballpark. But when you got to share, that's no different than the, the Jets and the Giants share uh, the same football uh, football and, field. And whose stadium would you call that? Giants. There you go. Not the Jets. It's in Jersey, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? Everything's on the other, New York City. Everything's on the other side right. of the river. You gotta go. You gotta take the L train. You gotta go. You gotta go take two cabs. You gotta go over to uh, Slauson. You gotta take you know, Hudson, and then you gotta do the double exchange. Why do I gotta do all that? Why don't you just tell me to go to Jersey? Go to Jersey. That's it. But the back to the Lakers and the Clippers. What, like I said, first of all, <laughs> the Lakers. We've already said it. Death of a dynasty. I think if the Lakers really wanted to make a splash, they should go both barrels blazing for LeBron James next year during free agents. I think if they did that, the Miami Heat win their third championship in a row, LeBron hoists up the trophy, and then he says, I'm taking my talents. LeBron going to try and win four in a row. Right. I don't think they're going to win this one, though. But, to have but that's a to, different story. But have him go to L.A. and do it. Tinseltown. He comes back, and then here's Kobe. Because, you know, Kobe's goal is all, all Kobe's goal is is to tie Michael. He's got five, he wants six. And I think that's where he's trying to go with this thing. So, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's, the, that's, that's not going to happen for Kobe, because I think with the injury that he got, you know, this is going to be his last season. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just gone. Just right off in the sunset. Sit down somewhere and say I was the greatest Laker that ever was. No. We know he wasn't. But right. he can say that. Though. He can, oh. Like Kanye West. What's wrong with Kanye? That something, car accident did a lot to us. Something, break something is terribly wrong with that young man. Yeah, well, you got to remember. I mean, he was just thrusted into the lexicon of 
of pop culture and you know then his mom dies and you know he hooks up with Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. That's a lot for a man to take. Man. I mean, that's... What? What is wrong with I mean, imagine man? you. I mean, I know you're in that stratosphere with Kanye. What? You know. But imagine if you'd have made some of the mistakes he's made. Like hooking up with Kim Kardashian. Think about that. I am. <laughs> Don't think too long, though. We got to move. We got to yeah. get back on Yeah, sports. let's move forward. Let's move yes, forward. You were, you were really there. I was but going places. Back to the NBA. Now, the other thing that happened this week, LeBron scored 61. Everybody's like, oh, my goodness, LeBron. Oh, MVP. 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 And then he can't throw a fish in, back into the ocean. What, he was 6 for 18, mm-hmm. something like One that. 1 for 16 from the line. I mean, just stunk it up in back-to-back losses to Houston and against uh, – the Spurs last yeah, night. Yeah, the Spurs last night. Spurs is not a joke. Once again, well, they doing like yeoman type work. They just the Spurs are that old book we read when we was kids. Yeah, we, we the talk- hare and the tortoise, and they're the tortoise, slow and steady. They'll be there. They're always there. Always there. Tim Duncan, you know everybody talk about testing athletes for steroids. He needs to be tested because Tim Duncan's got to be about what fifty. But, but look how Tim Duncan plays. Like he's 50. The, the, Tim Duncan never looks like he plays hard. Because he looks like he <laughs> plays like a 50 You know what I'm saying? He should wear some sweats with the shorts on the outside because he looked like he's playing at the Y. You never see Tim Duncan running the court, running the floor. I don't think Tim Duncan's ever seen Tim Duncan. I mean, he's playing now like Kareem used to do back in the day. You know, Kareem used to never go past half court. Unless they'd be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Get get down there. So you shoot the sky. Yeah, up. they down there passing the ball down. Here come Kareem. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a hot dog. Yeah, you got know. a drink. Oh, I didn't think you guys needed me that time. Yeah, like, you know. Kareem, come on. What's yeah, up? Yeah, they got 10 seconds left on the clock. clock right. <laughs> Here come Kareem. And then he get down there and catch it, do the same move. Yeah, yeah. To the right, come over to the left. Sky hook. Bucket. Two point. And, and then, you know, and then by the time he gets down there for defense, the they, on their, they on their way back. <laughs> And they running by him. He's like, hey, did I just see you guys down He used to tickle me sometime when I watched him play, but he was an excellent ball hey, player. The captain. That was the man. You know, I'm going to start a real controversy and put it here live on tape. People talk about who's the greatest basketball player of all time. There's only two to me. Chamberlain. No. Russell. Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His numbers say he's the greatest of all time. He's the leading scorer in NBA history. He has six NBA titles. He has three NCAA titles, and he has three high school championships. There's nobody who can even come close to that, except in terms of titles, Bill Russell. Right. But but, but when you look at those things, high school, college, those guys, seven-footers back in those days were unheard of. Mm, Maybe. I mean, maybe you get a six eight, six nine, maybe six eleven. Right. Was well, seven foot two. Now Kareem was what seven three. Yeah. But seven. he had to me the reason why I say greatest. You know, like I say, everybody gets caught up in the norm, numbers because everybody keeps throwing in. You know, well Jordan's got six and uh, LeBron only has. You know. Mm-mm. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a model of consistency, meaning he was great at every level. Other guys have to ascend to greatness. Kareem was great from the first day. And I think that's the reason why I call it. Because you think about, you know, other players who you never really heard about them in high school. They did okay in college. And then they got to the pros. and they were, This dude powers high school. Power Memorial. New York City. The playgrounds. This man was the best of the best. For his entire career. Could you imagine that he got called on a lot when he was in class? You know, you sitting in the desk. And <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the tallest student in there. And you don't want to teach your seat. <laughs> What's five? What's five? Kareem? No, oh, that wasn't. Was that his name back then? No, Luau Val Cinder. Cinder. See? Now, that was the name right there. Luau. Could, 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 could you see uh, doing introductions? Oh. And from UCLA. 
Come on. Number 12. Come on. Lou Al Cinder. Uh, he, he come lumbering out. <laughs> Still running the same way. Yeah. No matter. But that's, that's who I, because basketball, if you think about it, has always been built inside out. I know Jordan changed the game in his era before. I'm just talking about that model of consistency. Well, every team used to go for a big center. I mean, you, there wasn't no such thing back then as a power forward. Right. You had two guards, two forwards, yeah. and a center. But you think about it, being an old military guy, what's the most important thing in your carrier group? The most Oh, that's your aircraft carrier. And remember when Al McGuire used to call the big guys the aircraft carriers? Because you think about it. The other guys around them, they did what they could do. But the most potent war machine ever built was what? The big man. That's it. And you put them out there in the middle and let them go. So I'm just saying, I know there's a lot I mean, of debate going on. I mean, I mean, you look even in college, they, they really they're not centers. They call them forwards. They, 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 they'll, they'll call him a center. Well, he's probably no bigger than the forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you you said it earlier about back in the day, the, the seven-footer was really unheard of. Today, if you think about Joel Embiid, the young man who plays for Kansas, he's not from the United States. He's from Africa. They had to, mm -hmm. You don't see too many state-bred seven-footers playing basketball anymore. You said earlier, a big guy now is 6'8", 6 6'10", 6 mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I, you hate to say, you know, it's a dying breed, but you don't see too many guys who are seven feet and dominant. They may be tall. You know, remember Illinois had a couple guys come through here, uh, Tisdale and Nick Smith. Mm -hmm. But those guys weren't the epitome of a center right. in terms of getting in the post, getting the ball, Dominate and play Duncan and all that. They were shooting threes and, you know, playing on the perimeter a lot. So, that's all. Now, I know you told me earlier to keep your breast when it was three o'clock. It's two. Three? It's two fifty-seven. So. Oh heck! What the? What the heck? I two. need you to dial this number. All right, I'm I'm looking at the phone. One one five one two five one two. Oh, I forgot you got to dial nine first. Uh, Technical failure. I know. Dial nine first. Nine, one, five, five. one, two. Six, seven, one. Six, seven, one. Zero, one, three, four. Zero, one, three, four. Yeah. Very special. Is it ringing? It's ringing. So as the phone's ringing, we'll play the Jeopardy music. UPTV channel five. Now, would it be embarrassing if they, Hello? they didn't, didn't, didn't answer? Hello? Hello? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm better than some, worse than others. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody around the world, I'd like to introduce you to Tanea Overton, my daughter. Wow. We get to see. Uh -huh. She actually, ex first of all, I'm glad she answered the phone. Yeah, I am too, because that would been real <laughs> embarrassing on TV and radio that she didn't answer. I know, man. But <laughs> second of all, actually, is, I still want to make sure. Now, Tanea, can I ask you a couple of questions to identify who you really are? I guess so. <laughs> Who's your father? Sammy Britton. How much were you paid to say that? Nothing. See. Are you currently on any medication, over the counter or otherwise? No. Okay, I guess that confirms it because, <laughs> you know, for her to admit it freely like that, that is your and daughter. And why not? And why not? And 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 what's making this interview so special? Today is Tanea's birthday. Get out. Yes, here. it. How old are you today? I know it's not nice. Twenty-two. To ask a lady her age. Twenty-two. I didn't ask you, Dad. There you go. Twenty-two. If that's what she, oh, so that's the answer and she's sticking to it is what you're saying. Of course she is. And Tanea lives in? 
Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Now, here's the question that everybody wants to know. Okay. Because he mentioned this, or he he said this at the beginning of the show, but I still, as his friend and longtime colleague, don't believe him. He said he was a fun dad. And I said, the only time you're a fun dad is when you just give money and stay out of the way. Was Sammy Britton a fun dad? <laughs> Got gave money and stay out his, of the way. He had his money. He had it. If you could share one story, not to embarrass yourself, but to embarrass him. <laughs> to embarrass him. To embar we got to embarrass. You know, I've been around your dad for over 10 years. And there's one yeah. thing that's good. Is it a good embarrassing yeah. st story about your dad? So feel free to share anything that you think is funny. Well, that my granny was still doing the laundry. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Say that one more time. That my granny was still doing his laundry. <laughs> All right, this is this is over. No, that 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 just nailed it right there. Oh, so no. now that's because she says I overfill the fill the wash. What? <laughs> he said yeah, you were still a grown man, and granny was doing your laundry. Wow. Uh, you know your, your daughter is very endearing right now. Okay. <laughs> I was just being honest. See, uh, now you can't get mad. You taught her just like George Washington. I cannot tell a lie. He, he didn't My father did not know how to use a washing machine. He did not chop down a cherry tree. Either. Right, and your mother still does your laundry. All right, that's enough. <laughs> so so what are you doing today, Tania? Um, actually, I was trying to get out of work, but I'm still here. And can you say who your employer is right now? Sure, I work for a residential treatment center called Helping Hand Home for Children. Fantastic. Good job. You're right. Making good money. Yes, I do have a good job. I don't know about making good money. I work for a nonprofit. Oh, oh well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on, oh, on second thought there. Because I was going to ask you for a loan, but. Uh... Uh, no. <laughs> so, so when's the party? Party? No party? Um, no, probably not. I think we'll have cake and ice cream on Sunday, though. Cake and ice cream. Now, you know, your granny made me a cake, a mini cake, because my birthday is Sunday. Oh, well, happy birthday. Thank you. See? Pisces. I, I, I yeah. Well, my granny will be here on Monday, so I'm sure I can convince her to make me a cake. There you go. Well, mine is gone. I've devoured mine. She made me a nice uh, angel food cake with frosting and sprinkles. It was delicious beyond compare. So hopefully she'll make you one as half as good as the one she made me. That's awesome. All right. Okay, well, we're going to let you get back to work. We're going to get back to work. We're going to talk some more sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, Okay. Huh? I said, okay. So how's the grandkids? Hey, tell the kids. I said, what's up? I will do so. All right. I don't know how they're doing. I haven't seen them yet today. Right. <laughs> See, she, she, she wisecracks, too. I see. <laughs> the apple has not fallen too far from the tree. <laughs> All right. Love you, baby. All right. Love you, too. Well, right, fantastic to talk to you. Happy birthday to you again, Tanea, from Talking Sports, WBCP 1580, and UPTV Channel 6 and 99 on UVerse. You know, this interview actually is being taped. You will be on TV tomorrow morning yep. at 7 a.m. Oh. Yeah. So just a little birthday wish and thank you from Good all job. the folks here at WBCP so we'll let you go and get back to getting ready for your uh, cake and ice cream on Sunday alright thank you more all than right. welcome we'll see you alright right, bye bye right, bye wow I had to do that wait a minute hold on you know I'm a baby girl go ahead and dab your eyes uh, you know I haven't seen her about Four or five years. Yeah. Down there in Texas. That's a long way to travel. So you do you do understand maps and geography. Oh, of course. Uh, that is, it is right. a long way to travel. That was my little brief interview. Well, that's special. Thank you all for taking time out and letting me, letting me do this. Yeah, well, hey. It's only once that, you know, now when you, you turn 20. She's 22. And you're 20 what? I'm 46. You're 40. 
You've been 46 for a long time. I just want to tell you know. And will be for a long time. Right. Come. I'm just letting you know. Then you made the fatal mistake the other day. Oh, no. I know. I dropped the ball. You on dropped that the one. ball on Facebook. <laughs> that gets, Facebook gets you in trouble. I dropped the ball on that. Big one. thing comes up on Facebook about ordering t shirts if you were born in 1954 and there's a certain person. Yeah, I did it. You made, messed up, didn't you? Mm hmm. Don't give me one of those t shirts. I was born in 54. All original parts. Everything still working. Yeah. I won't say that for me. I'm a foreign model. <laughs> you break down. You. I, bro I break down every 500 miles. And it's very <laughs> expensive to fix. I know. <laughs> Body's not cheap. Paying for the body <clears throat> is not cheap. That's the reason why you need to go. Get covered. Get covered in the Lord. That's it. All right. Uh, where we at? Let's talk some more. Well, we were talking to NBA before we. Oh, yeah, and we right. were talking about great, and we were talking about, I said Kareem. And, but back to current NBA standards. Right now, you've got uh, about a month left in the season. You know, teams are starting to separate, you know, the old saying, the pretenders and contenders and stuff like that. We mentioned earlier about the issues that LeBron had this week. You know, Kevin Durant, you talked about the Clippers. Indiana, the Pacers. Quietly moving right along. But they're, Aren't they in first place right now? Yeah, but you know they they, they, they had a couple couple games over uh, Miami in terms of that one and two seed. The issue I've got with Indiana, Paul George, the guy who early in the season, I made the mistake saying that he was probably the second best player in the league at that time. Boy, was I wrong. You know, and it was no disrespect to Kevin Durant or anybody like that. It was just the way he and the Pacers came out, the way they were playing. His shooting percentages are starting to drop. And when I say drop, I'm talking about way down. And this could be an issue getting into the playoffs. When you get in one of those games where it's Paul George and the Pacers against LeBron in the Heat, where, you know, you got to have one of those mono -e mono battles and you need him to be hitting on all cylinders. And if he's shooting in the 40 percentile range, that's not going to cut it for them to get over the hump, which is the heat, and get into the NBA Finals. You know, I thought they was going to take care of the heat pretty handily last season. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. <clears throat> I still think the issue with the Pacers is they don't have a point guard. George Hill is not a point guard in the – it also, you know, you talked earlier about centers. Mm -hmm. There's also a premium on point guards. And what I mean by that, you think about what a Chris Paul does for the Clippers. You know, all these dunks and stuff and lobs, and that's fine and dandy, but when you talk about a point guard, you're talking about somebody who runs the team. Now, you know, speaking of a good point guard, Let's think of one that has used to play out and used to play for the University of Illinois. Went out to uh, Utah and played Darren Weave. Now you over here at the New Jersey Nets, and you don't hear nothing from him. Brooklyn Nets or whatever they call. Him. Well, you think about it. He had a ankle injury early in the season. The Nets got off to a just embarrassing start. They got a lot of old veterans on that team, and you we we joked around about how Tim Duncan plays. Well, the reality is they got about three or four Tim Duncans on that team. And I think Darren has kind of been caught up in the wash, so to speak, of, you know, when you got a Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, <coughs> and a Joe Johnson, three perennial all-stars, sometimes when you have, for the lack of a better term, too much talent, guys start deferring. Oh, Sam will do it tonight because he's a vet. Oh, Mark will do it. He's a vet. Jazz will do it. He's a vet. And y'all thinking the same thing. Oh, Joe will do it. And pretty soon nobody's done it. And then you get down to these crunch time games. And, and you lose. Right. <clears throat> so I think in Darren's situation, I think it was better when he, they didn't have as much talent. And he could be the focal point on this team. Because he's a different type of point guard than Chris Paul. Mm. I mean, Darren is, to me, a scoring type of point guard. You know, there's talk that Brooklyn might just sneak into the playoffs. Yeah, just like sneaking into a Kung Fu theater. They ain't going to be there that long. 
I mean, you know, I mean, what is your record now? Do you know? I couldn't tell you. But no, we might have to look it up. Right we'll, now. We'll, we'll use the the lab. We'll go into the lab and check that out. The mini but, lab. But yeah, you know, like I said earlier, got about a month left in the season. It's gonna, you know, some interesting things. You hear the conversation. Uh, Joe Kim Noah, I guess, talked to Carmelo during All Star Weekend about coming to Chicago. Could you see Carmelo in Chicago and D Rose? Could you see that work? No, I couldn't either. I think Carmelo Anthony either needs to just stay in New York and get all his money, not even worry about winning, or seriously, come on, come on now, winning. You, if you're gonna be there, you're gonna have to win. He's there right now, and now that's my point. They're in New York right now. Look at that lineup with Tyson Chandler and Stoudemire and crazy J.R. Smith and, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. and all these. They're not winning. No. So either stay there, re-up your contract, and that's what's going to be. Or I talked about L.A. earlier with LeBron. He could be his Robin just like D. Wade is. I don't know if Carmelo can fit that mold of being a Robin. I don't think so. But I mean, when you used to be in the star attraction, mm -hmm. you want to continue being the star attraction. But that's why you have to tip your cap to Dwayne Wade. Right. Because Dwayne Wade made a conscious. This wasn't he got pushed out of the way. He actually said it verbally. LeBron had to be the man for that team to go any further. How many pros... How many man's man's pros pros are gonna step aside and say, Sam, better than I am. Take the lead. Well, he had to. He had no choice. He had a choice. No, no, you, yeah, no you, he had a on, choice. Now, you know if you know no. the guy coming in is better than you. First of all, how many guys You just have to accept the fact that he's better than I am, I'm gonna have to become a role player. But some guys don't my point is they're not because of ego. That's the reason why when you move this talent in the NBA, certain t the chemistry doesn't mesh because certain guys just be like, Shh. KG, when he was playing for Minnesota back in the day, and him and Stephon Marbury, there was a, they never got out of the first round because what? Stephon Marbury thought he was the man. KG thought he was the man. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew KG was the man, but Stephon never gave that up. KG left, went to Boston. He wins. rest is history. Where's Stephon Marbury? Parts unknown. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, so. We had to look him up. We want to give kudos to the Philadelphia 76ers for retiring. AI. Al Alan, uh, Alan, Alan Dew's jersey. Alan Iverson. Him. After what he went through with his NBA career was a roller coaster ride. But uh, the 76ers were kind enough. To show the respect. Show the respect and retire the jersey. Because, you know, they run around saying, you know, the man is broke. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he got a couple of dollars. Relatively speaking, he's getting ready to get a large lump sum payment from Reebok, I think, when he turns 50. And uh, it's going to be a sizable payment in the range of 40 to $50 million. So well, Reebok was looking out but when we were looking out for his sale. I don't know if Reebok was looking out for him or maybe they just, his agent, maybe structured it that way so that there was always money available right. in his latter years. So maybe that was good thinking and good planning on their part. But back to Allen Iverson, the athlete. Still think Allen Iverson is kind of under the radar when it comes to some of the best basketball players uh, in his generation. And the fact that he was barely six feet tall. But in, when, when he was on Allen Iverson could score on anybody. I think everybody's seen the video of him crossing Jordan up and then busting a the jumper on him. Uh, you go back to the uh, 2001 uh, NBA Finals against the Lakers where he single-handedly uh, got the Sixers to the NBA Finals and then the, the incredible performance against the Lakers where he hits the step-back three-pointer and steps over Teron Lue who was the guard for the Lakers at the time. Now, obviously, the Lakers went on to win the series mm -hmm. in five because uh, Dikembe Mutombo couldn't do anything with Shaq. But I think Allen Iverson, pound for pound, at his peak, one of the greatest basketball players ever. 
to lace them up. Did you put him on Mount Rushmore? What was that big joke with him? What was going on? With him? Yeah, the, the, the Mount Rushmore thing, I think, is really overhyped because it depends on what you're looking for and style of play, et cetera, ears and stuff like that. So, you know, I say, no, I wouldn't put him on the Mount Rushmore. But if we had to make a top 10 list of best players six feet and under, he's definitely, Isaiah. to me, Isaiah would be one. Allen Iverson would be two if I had to make that list. So is, is, uh, is, is Thomas still coaching? No, not coaching. Now, I don't know if you heard the rumblings yeah, about that's Isaiah that's where that's they were good. talking about Detroit firing Joe Dumars and bringing in Isaiah's GM. After the, Isaiah has destroyed. <laughs> don't go there. Uh, you got to. Anyway, the C- he didn't be Then it. the CBA went defunct because Isaiah Thomas. The New York Knicks, with them crazy contracts he signed guys with, he even went into college teams and, you know, yep. Florida International. Right. So, you know, when we talk about, I mean, as a basketball player, Isaiah, big thumbs up. Guy with a checkbook, I wouldn't even let him go grocery shopping with a debit card. Well, you know, Michael Jordan started off pretty crappy when he went into – the uh, uh, management management mm-hmm. business, and and now the Bobcats, they might sneak into the playoffs. Too. Well, you know, you can only be get bad for so long. We talked started the early part about the NBA segment. You talk about the Clippers. Think about how many first round draft picks the Clippers have destroyed, or you know, they were in the lottery so many years. You know, what I'm saying the blind squirrel. Mm-hmm. I mean, five years in a row, you got a lottery picks. You should have a squad. Just by default. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, hey, let a monkey pick your team. Well, you don't have to let a monkey pick the team, but you, as you said, the law of large numbers, enough good guys should come to your team mm-hmm. based on your standing in the draft that you're eventually going to end up with a good team. Yeah, at least be competitive. Right. right. But right now, Clippers are playing some good ball. Uh, but once again, like I said, Jordan. Now he got the Bobcats on the uh, on the cusp of maybe getting into the playoff. Mm-hmm. I don't think George is doing all this work himself. No, it's not just him. I mean, they've got an organization. I mean, he's probably talking to somebody, and, and they say, "Hey, Mike, here's what we're getting ready to do." He's he, you know he's wise enough now that he's not like the Jerry Jones. You know how Jerry Jones just destroyed the Dallas Cowboys. You know now in making. Now the flip side is we talk about money. You know Jerry Jones. Bought the Cowboys for 140 million, and yeah. now it's worth two point something billion. Yeah, exactly. So hey, I mean, him and Hillary Clinton, when it comes to invested money, they know what to do. Shot to Hillary. Yeah, yeah, so I got got, yeah, I got you. I got that in there. But um, you know, back to Jordan, back to the Bobcats. You're right. Law large numbers. Get some guys in there. And the Eastern Conference, other than the Heat and the Pacers, there's nobody else out there. No. You know, no, nope. no. You have to, you have to go out west for the for the basketball team. I'm thinking Oklahoma just gonna run through the west. Right. We're gonna go to the phone lines at three five nine nine two two seven. Talking sports. If you're a Bull fan, hang up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Town booty. What's yes, it? indeed. Uh, that Eastern Conference ain't all wrapped up like you thought it was, huh? Yeah, it's. You know, we we talked earlier, Heat, Pacers, and then after that, you know, you got to drop off the Bulls of the three seed. Um, Uh But they do, you know, being a Bulls fan, realistically, do you think they have enough bullets in the gun to get? To go all the way through. Yeah. I think it's an uphill battle to get all the way through if you have to play Miami and Indiana. And and if you think about it, being the three seed, you would have to play Miami, uh, being a, it'd be a two-three matchup in the semis, and then you'd have to play Indiana in the finals because the four seed is who? I don't even know. See, and that's the point. That shows you how bad the East is. Is that we we, we can't even look at four teams out of the Eastern Conference to think that there's going to be any type of battle. So the Bulls, you're right, uphill battle. They're going to have to beat uh, the Heat, and then they're going to have to beat Indiana if they think they're going to get to the NBA Finals. And 
Yes. I just think it's just. So, I'm, I'm going to say this about Indiana. I think they have all the weapons that you need. Whether or not they, whether or not they uh, have everything that they need. Um, whether or not they have everything that they need to win the championship is a different question. And what's missing to me, I think, is an understanding about winning. Right. Um, and I, I do think that's what separates them even from the Bulls. And the Bulls have an understanding about women winning uh, with Thibodeau and with some of the other players that have been there already. Now, I know Indiana went to the finals, and, uh, you know, but up to the Eastern Conference Championship, I mean. But I, I don't know if they really understand what it takes. And you can watch how this – and, you know, timing is everything. The Bulls are gelling, and Indiana is just struggling, you know. Um, and I'm really, I'm really concerned about Dwayne Wade. I really think Miami – could be in trouble if Dwayne goes down. If I, I agree with you, if, if Dwayne Wade goes down, but I think right now, what you're seeing is a wily veteran. You know, he's going to give you flashes of bit brilliance, but he knows as well as the organization knows, they only need him when they get to that semi round, like you, if, if they play the Bulls, and when it gets to the finals. But right now, you know. It is, this is just like watching, you know, the old Lakers back in the day. Sarge talked earlier about, you know, how the Lakers used Kareem or like how Boston was with Robert Parrish and guys like that. Now, obviously, the difference is we're talking about a shooting guard as opposed to a big guy who, you know, you can make up for a big guy with other guys on the floor. But I don't think, you know, Dwayne Wade's issues are going to be that relevant uh, until you get to the later stages of the playoffs, you know, and even then, but I agree with you going back to what you said about Indiana. I agree with you about the, that maturation process of learning how to win. You know, it is, I mean, you think about the number of years you've been around basketball and you've watched NBA basketball and how many years it took the bulls, how many years it took Detroit and so on where teams had to be beat up for you know, two, three, four years in the playoffs before they even advance to the next level. That's right. You know, right. so you know, and especially when you got to go through a team like Miami or, or, or even Chicago to do it. Um, I ain't gonna hold you. I just got two things to say before I leave. One is Champagne Central Regional Champs. All right, I just wanted to make sure I got that one in for there everybody out there that might be that mm. might misunderstand what's gonna happen tonight. And you know. <laughs> So uh, I wanted to put that out there. Uh, the other thing is that, of course, the race is heating up. The real fight is on. Carol Ammons spread the word, Carol Ammons for the 103rd. Who? Carol Ammons spread the word, Carol Ammons for the 103rd. Who? Election day, March 18th, you can vote early for Carol Ammons, representing. Making sure you get out there, advance the dream, make history, Sing Carol Lammons as the Democratic nominee to represent the 103rd district. You know what? The, oh, yes, sir. The pleasure is always ours when A Dub mm -hmm. just calls and talks sports. Yeah, that's all he does. <laughs> yeah, you know, some we got to take him out because you know he needs to find some other passion. He only has passion for sports. Yeah, I know it. He don't have a passion for but, anything but he, else. But, he, but, but, but if you know A Dub like I know A Dub, there was an ulterior motive to this phone call. You think so? I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I've known him long enough. I know him. He's a straight shooter. Yeah. And he's only worried about one thing, and that's Bulls basketball. Yeah. Bulls basketball. And I will be at Champagne Central tonight with my 1989 Letterman jacket on, with all with my numbers, my patch, and my two uh, varsity letters on it. Represent Champagne Central Regional Champs. And then I'll be spreading out information and passing out flyers for Carol Ammons to be the next number seven nominee at 130. Now, one last thing, A Dub, before we let you go on that Letterman's jacket. Who you voting for? Do us a favor. What's that? Shoot a little armor all on the sleeves and, and a little free breeze on the inside liner. I got you. I'll let y'all later. Man. All right. Appreciate you calling Talking Sports. They still have Letterman jackets? Yeah, they do. See some kids still wearing them. My my older boy, he never he didn't get a letter. Yeah, yeah. I never had I had a leather sweater though. You don't even want to say that. 
They don't have leather sweaters no more either. Ah, no, they don't. And they don't have people named Biff and Muffy either. <laughs> hey. Did you meet them at the malt shop? I mean, you always wore your leather sweaters. Wear your leather sweaters today. Yeah. We're you going know. to the malt shop with Sarge. Then when you get going steady, you let your girlfriend wear your leather sweater. You going what? Steady. <laughs> and um, you're 46. 46. That's in dog years. What they call it? You just said go and stay. What what do they call it now, Veronica? Veronica's like uh, dating. Dating. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that would dating. be simple. Oh, okay. Like going, going steady. Going steady. Hey, Veronica, do you have a hoop skirt and bobby socks? See, she's not she's not from your world. Oh, she's over there sexing. I mean, texting right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let's get a thirty. Go on, go ahead. Uh, this guy said. Going steady. steady. He's an idiot. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna take our final break. When we come back. We, we'll talk about that central, uh, central centennial Central. regional final. And we will go over the uh, get covered Illinois. Uh, get covered Illinois one more time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Major League Baseball. Things are kind of heating up. Still preseason or extra, they still play exposition. Well, right. I was letting me finish. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. Forget it. Why don't you just, go, ste- why don't you just go steady, man? Uh, I will. <laughs> we'll be back right after these. Welcome back, Bueller. Yep, Bueller. Talking sports. Last, uh, Few minutes. You know, during the break, Joe and I were discussing the new law in Massachusetts. <laughs> After a crazy judge <laughs> said it was, he didn't see a problem with people taking pictures up ladies' skirts, and he s- signed it into law. And then the, it's now legal to walk around with your video camera, camcord. <laughs> Quarter phone, tablet, <laughs> whatever you use to take pictures with, the shoot up ladies' skirts. And in other news, five jaws were broken today <laughs> in the state of Massachusetts <laughs> for guys trying to upskirt. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? Well, here's the first thing. What ju- I mean, I know that some judges have been on the bench a little too long. Too long. You know how you talk about common sense and they said some people don't have it. Yep. He, he be one of them. He would fall right in the front of the line. I mean, he probably signed it in the law. And then probably said, let's go for lunch. Yep, jumped up out of the judge's chair, yeah. running running down the hallway to the courthouse or the city building, wherever it is, with it looks cool. Right. Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's legal. It's yeah. legal. <laughs> it's legal. It's legal. It, that's crazy. It just shows you the way our world and our society. Did they overturn it today, though? Uh, from what I understand, the legislature <laughs> acted fast <laughs> to ban upskirting in Massachusetts. It's all you pervs who were headed to Massachusetts. I know. Turn around and go to New York. I have my bags packed. <laughs> and your tablet ready. Yeah, Battery charged. Ticket bought and everything. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I upskirt you. I'm crossing the state line. <laughs> the funniest thing is it's not funny how... I actually have a term for it. Yeah, upskirt. Upskirt. Now, who thought that one up? They'll sit at the board table again. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, All right, you came up with you versus. This is our new iPhone 5. Now, we can do a lot of things with these. Including? <laughs> including. Taking uh, pictures of ladies' skirts. But that just is too long. We need a phrase for that. Joe, you got it. You got another idea? Well, you know, your camera will be pointed up and you're trying to take pictures under skirts. How about upskirting? Oh, man. Mm-hmm. You're going places, Stovall. Mm-hmm. What do you think, big guy? You're going places. Can I go in the executive bathroom? No, you still can't go in there. You might be wanting to take <laughs> You might want to take a picture of upskirt. Upstalls. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah that mm. one. Oh, that was that. Yeah, you sitting there on the toilet, and the next thing you know, you see. <laughs> All right, we've lost. We've officially lost the show. The phone comes sliding. Big, big, giant tablet. 
Oh, shit. I'm just trying to sneak a peek. That's all. Hey, don't mind me. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing in there. It's legal. <laughs> I'm in Massachusetts, all right. All right. All right, back to sports. Back to sports. Back to sports. Tonight, a big one. Champagne Central takes on Champagne Centennial in the Class 3A Regional Final. Yeah. Now, the reason why I say it's a big one, first of all, uh, this be what third or fourth time they didn't match this season. Dude. Third time. This is the rubber match. First time, probably one of the best high school basketball games I've seen ever. Three overtime thriller. Central wins 80 79. You turn around, you go back to Centennial. Centennial comes out hard and fast, almost gets a 20 point lead on Central. Central whittles it down to three points, but in the end, the Chargers win, I think it was 61 50. So 11 point victory. Now you come back. Centennial won the Big 12 Conference. They haven't lost a game since their Christmas tournament in mid December, or obviously late December. The Illinois recruits have been playing some pretty decent basketball. Michael Finke yeah. has been doing a fantastic job. He's uh, averaging about 18, 19 points a game uh, scoring. They've got a lot of talent on that team, got some excellent coaching, good players. You, you think about the old saying, styles make matchups. And when I look at this, you know, me being the old boxing guy that I am, this is Ali Frazier. And I look at Central like Frazier in the standpoint, they're going to take the hit. Because Centennial is going to give it. Because mm -hmm. they've been giving the hits all year to everybody. They've only lost, I think, four games. So that's a strong team. But sometimes there's a guy out there who can eat your punch and give you two. And that's how Central is made up with their team in terms of they're not big. Biggest player on the team is 6'4". They really don't have the, you know, like with Centennial, you've got Michael Finke factor, that one Division I player that, you know, really stands head and shoulders above everybody else. But they're scrappy. They play fantastic defense, and they don't quit. And I think that's that styles that, you know, as I said before, make matchups. And tonight will be no exception. You're going to be playing at Central. Oh, so, you so now you're in the Maroons gym. Now, Centennial will be the quote-unquote home team because they're the higher-seeded right. team. But it's in Combs' gym on Lee Kabuti floor. So with all that being said, I mean, it's just. You're in for a good one. If you, if you get a ticket, because first of all, you need to get a ticket early. Because you got to remember, Combs Gym only holds about 12, 1,300 people. And they stated that the last time Central and Centennial played, it was about 1,800 over at Centennial. So if you don't have a ticket, if you can't get inside, you'll have to tune to 1,400 WDWS to listen. But it it should be a good one. You know? And I think, more importantly, I think it's going to be a good one because uh, Wayne McClain, who is the head coach over Champaign Central, has revitalized that program in one year. And he's instilled a work, ec work ethic and character into these kids. Man, they go to war for him any night. Uh, back in January, Central went over to Lincoln, Illinois. Lincoln is currently the number one ranked team in the state in Class 3A and beat Lincoln on their home floor. You know, Lincoln back in the day used to be a uh powerhouse of a school when it came well, to basketball. Back in the day and today. Mm -hmm. They are a powerhouse now. And uh, for Central to go over there and win at Lincoln showed a lot about what they have in terms of not only the team, but coaching staff, and just the total overall program in terms of what Coach McClain is trying to put together over there. So with that being said, you know, it's the old uh, immovable object uh, against the irresistible force. And uh, you get in there tonight, you won't either side, you won't be disappointed. Obviously, there's only gonna be one winner, but I think the city itself is gonna be a winner just due to the fact that you've got competitive basketball from both schools. Yeah, excellent, excellent. What time of the game? Seven thirty. Seven o'clock. Do they still tip at every quarter? No. Mm -hmm. Alter, remember back in the day, right? You had to jump ball at every quarter. Every quarter, you had to jump ball. No, now they do the alternating possession. Oh, okay. So after, you know, whoever wins the jump from there. The only time you get another jump ball in a basketball game, overtime. Overtime uh, 
are always started with a jump ball, but alternate possessions uh, dominate from after the first jump ball to the end of the game. So, a little, little rule change there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a hell ball. You speak jump ball every time. Now, speaking of basketball, I don't know if you saw the incident last night with <laughs> University of California, Santa Barbara against Hawaii. Yeah, the, the kid ran out onto the floor and jumped in the coach's face. Right. And we've been talking the past couple of weeks about fan interaction in these games. But I was so stunned by this one and the fact that this guy ran, to me, the equivalent of being in B section at State Farm Center. Well, didn't the coach get called uh, for a technical or something like that? The coach came out on, he got upset about a call, so he came off the bench onto the floor. Can't do that. Right. He was probably about five feet away from the bench area. He got teed up. His players were restraining him to push him back to the bench. This guy, as I said earlier, ran from the equivalent of, to me, his B section, all the way down the stairs. I mean, when you see the video, you just see him coming down. Not one person, usher, security, whatever, stopped this kid. He runs onto the floor, past other players and official. And then he gets over there. Now, the guy couldn't have been no bigger than, <clears throat> looked like he's maybe average size, 5'8", 5'9", 150 pounds. Does a little gyration. He's pointing at the coach or whatever. And then two of the Hawaii players shove him to, you know, get him back. And then he runs back up into the stands, back to where he was sitting. Only at that point did security come and get him and mm -hmm. escort him out. Now, the word today is that <clears throat> there will be legal action taken against this fan. He is a student of uh, Santa Barbara, and they may expel him from school. I can see that happening. Yeah. My thing is, let's go back to what happened. How did he get down to the floor? How did he get all the way down to the floor? Now, now you know, most arenas have uh, event staff. Mm -hmm. You see them with the orange or yellow jackets or whatever, whatever color they have. Their primary job is to sit and look in the stands. That's it. Their job, they don't see any of the game. Right. Their back is to the game. Right. And as you said, they're looking up into the stands, into the bleachers. Did they not have any of those staff members? Let's say this. Let's go with the, let's go with the, they did have it. Whoever they are are not working any more games if they did have that staff. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, the distance that he traveled. Now, usually these these, these uh, event staff they are stationed at the uh, openings, opening where right. the, you know where the, where they come down to the floor. Right. Normally, you have a police officer somewhere in the vicinity. Right. So if the event staff has to call somebody, the officer's right there to act. Right. If there were, he fired too. Might as well be looking for a job at the zoo. That's crazy. Right, and I just you know, especially after what happened last week and uh, with uh, the fight that broke out. Right, yeah, the fight that breaks out with fans. Uh, you got uh, a player throwing a basketball at a, another player and getting involved in a fight. Um, we already, you know, the Mark Smart situation is uh, water under the bridge now. He's back playing. Man, that might have been the thing he needed to reinvigorate his career. He's mm -hmm. playing some good basketball. So you got it. You know, we rode him hard. So we got to do the same thing. You know, as Michael Irvin said, you know, don't lose intensity. Don't lose intensity. All right. So Marcus Smart, big thumbs up for the comeback and playing the way everybody knows you're capable of playing. But back to this situation last night, the thing that I'm getting sick of, I'm just going to put this out there. I'm sick of the YouTube person, you know, the guy that does this. Oh, look, the lady drove her van into the ocean. Yeah. Go save the kids and the lady and stop videotaping. Come on. This, the this, kid that runs out of this the is, This is society today, Joe. I, but they say, I, I mean, just like those YouTube fights of the girls fighting. And these. Or dudes fighting. Uh, yeah, you know, and people sitting there. It's, it's a big thing to do that and then throw it up on YouTube. See how many hits you can get. Oh, stop them. No. Stop the. Because here's the thing. Maybe, okay, the guy comes down and he, there was no threat. But what if he had, what if he had a knife? Or a gun. Or, right. And you're sitting there, are you going to videotape that all the way? Of course. That's, that's to me, it's just, it's mind-boggling at best. You seen the one with the guy getting eaten up by lions? 
No. He gets he's on a safari. He gets out the car to film a pride of lions. And that's my point. The lions then attack him and everybody's sitting there screaming the lions are sitting there eating dude. And they're but they're videotaping it. <laughs> exactly. That's how morbid our society why would you sit there with a camera and videotape? He was just in a vehicle, and now you see him getting mauled by lions. No, he getting eaten. Right, what, mauled, eaten, whatever vernacular you want to use. One of them had his leg all It was, it was ugly. And you watched it? It's today's society. Oh, so you interject yourself into that? It was gross. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, it, to me, I'm, I'm really getting kind of fed up with people who videotape these morbid scenes because what happens the same person who's sitting up there videotaping this stuff going on let's say you're in New York subway you fall off the platform onto well, hey hey how you doing down there uh, need help can you throw me a rope no I gotta hold this camera and videotape you uh, here come there's the train and there's you how much money do you think that Apple, Samsung, and all these other phone companies are making me off because of the video. They're getting better, high, more high resolution, more pixels. I and don't, I don't know, but I just it's it's the sign of the time. Well, we we got to change it because, like you know, back to sports. This situation could have been a lot more uh, egregious than you know just a crazy student running out of the stands, you know, to come down and do something like that. All right, okay, let's get at this one. Okay, is it, are you, can you still sign up for first string? You can still sign up for first string. I'm glad, excellent point. They will be at uh, Douglas tomorrow. They're doing uh, more skills and drills from 11.30 to 1.30 at Douglas. You can still sign up. Uh, you can also go on first string, Inc. That's F-I, how do you spell it? F-I-R-S-T. S T R I N G Inc. I N C all lowercase dot org and you can register online if you can't make it to Douglas to do the registration. I know the weather has really impacted baseball and the fact that you know you, you're not in that mindset, but with the weather starting to break right now and try to get an opportunity to get kids outside. So get your kid because April sixteenth and seventeenth is when suited league play starts. You know, so need yeah. to get these guys. And Big guys starting what? A first, second, something. Like no, that. that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. With that being said, I mean, I ask you this every year, uh, so I'm going to ask you again this year. You know, sometimes there are kids who are not able, or parents who are not able, to uh, afford to pay the uh, the entry fee. Is there uh, a waiver this year? That first ring is never. I say this every year, and I'm I appreciate you asking that question. First ring has never turned a kid away. Never. Peter McFarlane, Deborah McFarlane, Billy and Walter Reed, Michelle and John Cooper, they've done a fantastic job with getting uh, donations and raising money and things of that nature so that no kid will be turned away. The fee this year is 50, between 50 to $75. It may seem like a lot of money, but a lot of those same kids end up playing football, which is three times as much. I think football is like 180 bucks mm -hmm. for that. So uh, get on over and get them signed up. Uh, you know, for example, I think I told you we were talking about last week about gloves. Fifteen dollars for a glove, good Rawlings glove. When we were growing up, even to get a good glove like that back in the day, still cost you 25, 30, 40 bucks. You what? know, sometimes it would cost you. Even a hundred dollars to get a real quality mitt like that. So, Mine's called seventy-five. Well, that's because yours had six fingers. You know, then they had they had those. Remember, you remember when gloves? You used to didn't have the one that you put your finger out. Put your index. Here's, I saw new glove technology, and this is the crazy part. You just mentioned it. It's just you're on the same page. We used to take our baseball gloves, and you always had your index finger out. Right. And I don't know if that was for more control. I don't know why we did. I know I did it because that usually is the pocket area. Where you get the steam thing at. at. Right. We, so you, well, now they've, with new technology and the way they've set it up, where you take your index finger out, they actually have a pouch. Yeah, exactly. To put you, and I'm put like, you. now they went so far as to put a pouch on the outside. Who do you think thought that one? The guy who probably Hey, 
look here. We got a real problem. You know, everybody's putting a little finger out of their, out of their gloves. We, 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 we can make some money off it. Anybody have any ideas? Hey, big guy, I think if you put a pouch on top of the index finger, then you can pull your finger out and it's still protected if you put it inside the pouch. Show you three for three today. Man, man. You know what? Is that the key to the executive bathroom? You earned it, Joe. I gotta find it for. Oh, there it is. Man. Wow. I can't believe it. It's glowing. I'm actually gonna get it. Well, I'll give it to you after, after the meeting. <laughs> but yeah, that's new technology. We've seen, you know, changes in cleats and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you know, to, to surmise first string, first string is. As it says, a community thing. It's a community organization. Those guys have done a fantastic job. You know, I'm blessed. My kids have gone through the program. Uh, both played Little League Baseball over at Douglas. I started, my youngest was three, oldest was five. My oldest will be 20 this year. The youngest will be 18 this year. So that tells you how many years I've been involved with those guys. And they, they you know, for the lack of the resources that other leagues have and things of that nature the commit nobody has more commitment more passion and uh really the the thing you talked about earlier intestinal fortitude mm -hmm. it's all wrapped up over that first one. good 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 so so if you can't afford the the fee to sign your kid up bring them out anyway they won't get turned back all right okay what else what, okay get covered illinois let's go over this one more time if you're out without house i mean house if you're without health insurance, you need assistance in learning about your health coverage options under the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. uh, enrollment clinics are at Parkland College, uh, room X150, March 5th, and through March, oh no, March 5th and March 12th. Okay, let me get this right. March 5th and March 12th, from 1230 to 430 p.m. They're going to be at area churches here in town. Uh, so, from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. It's going to be at Salem Baptist Church, March 8th. That's tomorrow at uh, five, uh, 500 East Park Street in Champaign. March 15th, St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, uh, 2200 Follow Road in Urbana. And Wesley Foundation, March 22, 1203 West Washington Street in Urbana. Now, you're gonna, when you go there, they're going to have one of those navigators there. So this person is the one that's going to answer. Escalate. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about a person. A okay. person. Uh, they gonna ask you questions about applying for the health coverage. Uh, uh, what is the marketplace? How does it you apply to you? How does the marketplace make health insurance affordable? And they will help you in get enrolled into these programs. They gonna have. They gonna go through the whole thing right there. Uh, you need to bring your social security number, or passport, driver's license, or state ID. Uh, your financial information, like a tax return, W-2, or bank statements, uh, and any current insurance information, which, including employee health plans. So, uh, get on order if you need health care insurance. I mean, go get it, because March 31st is the last day, and if you don't have it, trust and believe, you will be fine. I think, it's, I think it's like $90 the first first year first year it's gonna go up and it's gonna continue to go up and i know there's a lot of uh, people who are out there hand wringing about obamacare social medicine etc well we already got it's called medicare mm -hmm. so for you know people to you know get into this thing and uh with their political views you know obviously we we've got to look at it from the standpoint of how do we take care of everyone now we can't you know america has always prided itself on protecting those who can't protect themselves and I think this is a classic example now does this change um, our health care system as we know it my answer is no because our health care system was changed years ago when we mm -hmm. went to the HMO PPO plans All right back in the day when it was a single payer you went to your doctor he treated you and you paid at the office that's how it worked Mm -hmm. You only had what was called catastrophic health care 
And that was when you were put into the hospital. Well, well, let, let, let's face it. Here in this country, uh, uh, health care, the medicine field by itself is a huge industry in this country. Oh, it's a for-profit bonanza. If you think about what the cost is of some prescription medication, mm -hmm. you know, when you have people who are in situations where they got to make a decision on food versus their prescription meds and other decisions they've got to make like that, you should not be put in that situation. And that's why, like I said, with uh, Medicare and Medicaid, things like that, those things were put in place to help those elderly people. Now, we, we all know this slides downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you see, you know, uh, the more money you got, the uh, better pills you can get, and this, mm -hmm. that, the other. Because pharmaceuticals have come a long, come a long way. If you think about some of the, basically everyday medicines, I like to call them, that weren't available just 20, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. that allow people to sustain a healthy, uh, you know, a functioning lifestyle, not healthy, but a functioning lifestyle, that, you know, 25 years ago, you'd either be dead, or you'd be hospitalized for some of the conditions that people can take medication now and still functioning within society. I mean, take you for example. Your voices are just—they're—they're they're not as distorted anymore because of the meds you take, right? This is true. See, you, they're very clairvoyant. You can hear the people talking in your head. All five of them. All five of them. Back in the day, it was like more of a jumbled mess. Right? Yeah, exactly. See, exactly. Thanks and to that's when you wind up in the sanitarium. You know, because you, you're you, doing this. Yeah, hugging yourself. So, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> you little but we make light of a serious subject, but I agree, get covered. Now, I would like yeah. to steal about 60, 90 seconds if I could, because tomorrow we lay to rest uh, a, a community icon, Charles C.C. C. Evans. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have, uh, if you know, the Don Moore Boys and Girls Club or just the North End community in general, uh, C.C., as he was fondly known for many a year, touched many lives within the community. Uh, CC worked at the Boys and Girls Club from the early to mid 70s on. Uh, you talk about people at the club, whether it be, you know, when it originally opened, Dave Lawrence, the late Walt Jackson, Terry Cole, and Jerry Johnson. And then you got it, that second group that came in there with uh, CC and Jackie Vonner and uh, Peter McFarland, David Suttle. Argy Johnson, that that crew, but CC was that guy that uh, I think everybody fondly knew. Whether it was driving at Partridge Family Orange, White, and Blue bus, that everybody rode on all the field trips and things of that nature, or CC working right inside the building. I think she, everybody has a story. CC was everybody's dad. That's probably the best way to put it. That's probably the best way to put it, Sam. Because because he treated you like you was one of his kids. That's it. And I think, you know, when people talk about we don't have any more people like that uh, in the community, you know, unfortunately, you're right. CC, because he treated everybody, as you said, like his own, he made sure that whatever message he was sending you, you were receiving that message. Mm -hmm. He was a straight shooter. And he made sure you understood it, too, when he That's explained it. it to you. He, uh, CC came from a a position not only of uh, education, but also wisdom, you know, and, and like I said about him being a straight sh shooter, you you never misinterpreted what CeCe was telling you. Mm -hmm. he, he, you knew exactly where you stood with him. If you did something good, CeCe would give you the kind of, that, that deep baritone <laughs> laugh, mm -hmm. but if he got upset, CeCe would bring the fire and brimstone to you. And to lose an icon like that community, I know it, it, it saddens a lot of people. Uh, obviously, we send out our condolences to Angela, his wife, and uh, his children. But we also, you know, CC touched many other people within the community. So tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m., Love Corner, uh, the wake starts at 9 to 11, and then his services are from 11 after that. So if you get a chance, whether it's just to go to the wake and uh, send up a private message or be able to listen to the celebration of CC's life tomorrow. Good on out to the Love Corner. But one final thing, I, I just want to thank all the people within the community who stepped up to try 
to do their best to make possible uh, a, the assistance in CeCe's home going. So I just want to applaud all those folks in the community who did uh, whatever they could in terms of donations to the various funds out there. And there still are funds available, or excuse me, funds out there that you can donate uh, to, I know, the Charles C.C. Evans Memorial Fund. There's one at First Federal. Uh, there's an another one at First Midwest Bank. And then there's another one on GoFundMe.com. And then the people at Jefferson Middle School have one. Uh, that was in a school in town where C.C. worked for many years. So touched a lot of lives. Sam said it best. C.C. Was, was everybody's father, and he treated you that way. So rest in peace, Charles C.C. Evans. Thank you. And with that... That's going to wrap up this edition of Talking Sports. We do this each and every Friday from 2 to 4. We'll lace them up and do it again next week, so you be sure and come back. Say goodbye, Joe. Is Upskirt illegal in Illinois? It will be because I got the law right here in my hand. <laughs>